Are you dreaming of a white Christmas? Well, is it going to be more of a dream or reality? I'm 5 News Chief Meteorologist Matt Standards. NOAA and the National Weather Service have redone the chances for a white Christmas based on data from 1991 to 2020. For the past 10 years, we've been taking an older data set there from 1981 to 2010. Now we've got new numbers and overall our winters have gotten a little bit warmer and so the chance for white Christmas has shifted a little bit farther towards the north, generally across the central and eastern United States. When you go westbound, it really is just a factor on your elevation. How high up do you live? Because the higher up you go into the mountains, generally the colder you are and the better chance of snow that you're going to get. But let's take a look area-wide on what we can expect for a white Christmas. So across the northeast and into New England, generally we've got a decent chance of a white Christmas. There towards the right-hand side of your screen, you see that darker blue, uh, you know, three-quarters of the chance you know, most times you're going to get a white Christmas when you go into the Adirondacks, the White Mountains, the Green Mountains, and headed north into northern Maine. And then with the, the lighter blue colors, you got that medium blue color where there's generally about a 50-50 shot, maybe a little bit better. So more than half your Christmases tend to be white with snow. And we're talking about a white Christmas, we mean that there's generally about an inch of snowfall on the ground for Christmas Day. And that medium color, that happens about half the time or greater. So we've got a good chance there in parts of western New York off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario where you get that lake effect snow and some of the Allegheny Mountains as you're south and west of uh, Albany and then even some of the southern fringes of the White and Green Mountains in western Massachusetts, you get that too. But notice once you get closer to the coast, the chance of a white Christmas starts to go down. That's generally because the Atlantic Ocean is warmer. And so when these systems come in, a lot of times in December where we haven't completely cooled down like we're going to go into January and February, it's still a little bit warmer along the coast, and that's why you get kind of a sharp cutoff. You go from, you know, Albany, which we got about a 50-50% shot, to New York City, where generally one or two out of every 10 Christmases are white, so the chances go a lot lower as you get closer to the coast. And then that happens as you get closer to Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, as you get more of that mid-Atlantic influence from the ocean. In the southeast, the chances are essentially slim to none. Unless there's just a rare storm, most likely Christmas is going to be green or brown. Now, the only exception will be in the higher train areas of the Appalachians, but we're talking about only one or two Christmases every 10 years in western portions of North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, in the very highest uh, mountain ranges there. And that's not really impacting a whole bunch of people. That's mainly you're looking at the mountains and you can maybe see some snow on top if you get a system to come in that's cold enough and that's positioned just right. Otherwise, it's gonna be warm for Christmas Day. In the central United States, we've noticed that line where we get maybe a small chance for a white Christmas to essentially really not a chance of a white Christmas. That transition has lifted off farther towards the north. In parts of the Ozarks, we can get a white Christmas, maybe one or two uh, Christmases every 10 years. You gotta go mainly north of I-70, north or really towards I-80 across the Corn Belt in order to get a better chance of a white Christmas. Farther towards the north, we don't have really terrain influences. We're just downright cold. We're we're in the central plains. We've got Canadian air that just easily flows because there's not any mountain range. There's nothing blocking that cold air coming in North Dakota and Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then really into Michigan as well. We've got a good chance of a white Christmas. Generally, three out of four or more of our Christmases are white across northern Minnesota into northern Wisconsin. Now, Michigan's kind of a different factor because we start getting that lake effect snow, and that's why you see some of the better chances for white Christmas kind of extend a little bit farther south on the eastern side of Lake Michigan. You can tend to get these lake effect snow bands that help us get a little bit more snow. You can kind of see that little bit of a nose with about a 50-50 shot, maybe a little bit better, 50 to 75% shot there towards Holland and Grand Rapids there into the western portions of, of of lower Michigan, uh, we can get some of those good lake effect bands. But of course, it's all about the timing of these storm systems. You gotta get the storm system coming in right before, right on Christmas day in order to get that snow. Because a lot of times, once the next system passes on through, we do start to warm up. So you've gotta time these systems out well, but about a 50-50 shot across Michigan. And then across the Corn Belt, really, a line there towards I-80, so Des Moines northbound, we've got about a 50-50 shot. You go westbound towards the Rockies and some of the coastal ranges, it's all about elevation. When you get closer to the coast, 
Notice how we don't really have a good chance of a white Christmas in Seattle and Portland. We're a little bit lower in elevation. Generally, we don't get a lot of snow in some of the major cities along the West Coast. You got to go up into the mountains. But I tell you what, on a day where the clouds clear out, it's beautiful. You can see the snow top mountains there. Uh, you can see Olympia has probably some snow on it. You go east and you see some of the Cascades having the snow on them as well. And it's pretty much a for sure uh, sign that you're going to have a white Christmas when you look off north into the mountains. Once you get a few thousand feet higher into elevation, you're going to get a white Christmas because generally this time of year in the, the late fall, early winter months, we get these systems that are just coming in one after the other off the Pacific coast. This is our wet season for the West. In fact, we've noticed some good drought conditions starting to uh, erode a little bit. It's starting to get a little bit better when we're talking about the drought situation across Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and south into California because this is our wet time of year. So we need to get as much snowpack as possible. You got the snowpack when you go higher up and that is the case once you go into Montana and Idaho. And on this map, we, we have some terrain that you can kind of see when you look through the colors. When you see the higher terrain, you see the chance for uh, the better chance for snow. But you look in eastern Washington, we don't have as much terrain. In fact, we kind of have some desert conditions in eastern Washington. Washington is not as po uh, populated once you head east of the Cascades, but we do have at least a small chance for some snow just because it's kind of cold enough. Boise, Idaho, around us, we just have about, you know, a white Christmas every maybe three years out of 10 years. So it's not often, but we do get them every once in a while. You got to go higher up in the terrain. And same story as you go farther south. You're talking about California, it's not where most people live. We're not talking about LA, San Diego, San Francisco. Forget about the white Christmas, it's just too warm. Sometimes we can have a wet Christmas, especially north of Los Angeles as you go towards San Francisco and Fresno and Sacramento where we're a little bit warmer, we get those systems coming in. But you look at the Sierra Nevada and it is beautiful. You look at the coastal ranges, ranges you can get a little bit of snow, but really the, the Sierra Nevada is better in order to get a white Christmas. At least you can see it. If you're close enough to the mountains, you can see the white tops. I guess we can count that for a white Christmas. Uh, but it's really all about terrain. And then Colorado, Utah, we're talking about higher terrain, getting the snow. Ski season has already begun for many, so they need the snow anyways. But white Christmas is all across Colorado. Once you get out of the terrain, though, once you hit Denver, chances start to go down. We can get really warm days and we can get really cold days here in the front range. And so that really depends on what system's coming through right for Christmas Day. It's about a 50-50 shot sometimes there towards Colorado Springs and Denver. But once you get in the mountains, of course, the mountains are beautiful. They're already snow-capped. Same story as you head farther south. Even portions of the desert southwest can have uh, white Christmas higher up into the mountains. But what about Arkansas and Oklahoma specifically? Well, chances have gone down. The previous data set that we've used for the past 10 years, in fact, Fayetteville had about a 7% chance of a white Christmas. Fort Smith, about a 2% chance. Low, but not zero. The new data set with the newest numbers over the past 30 years, we really haven't had many white Christmases. We've had some way in the past throughout the 1900s, but recently we have not. Fayetteville's chance has now gone to just a 3% chance, 7% to a 3% chance. And in Fort Smith, we've gone, we've cut it in half. We've gone from a 2% chance to a 1% chance. White Christmases just don't really happen very often anymore across Arkansas and Oklahoma. We can get snows in December, usually maybe one or two, but if you're trying to time it exactly for Christmas Day, the chances are slim. However, you go westbound as you head towards uh, Little Sahara, there towards the panhandle of Oklahoma, Guymon, Oklahoma. Sometimes we can get enough cool air to give us at least some snow showers that coat the ground with just a little bit of snow. And so that's why you see that dip. We, we can get some of that cooler air to try to move in. Once you move east of Oklahoma City towards Tulsa, Fort Smith, Fayetteville, and even into parts of Arkansas like, like Little Rock and Jonesboro and West Memphis and Arkadelphia, we generally have a little bit too much humidity and heat coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico wants to hold on with its, its warmer air across the area. Uh, and it kind of wins most of the time. But overall, white Christmases are still possible the farther north and the farther up you go.